Our gospel lesson this morning is from John 20, uh, beginning at the 19th verse, and it will go through the 31st verse, but as I explained, we will be taking a section at a time. It's probably as close as I get to expository preaching, if you're familiar at all with that term. Anyway, the... We want to think back to last week. Mary uh, Magdalene had gone to the tomb. It was empty. And she ran back and told the disciples. And so Peter and John went and they looked and the tomb was empty. And they were excited because they figured that Jesus that was indeed uh, raised up from the grave. But that's all they know. And then Mary goes back, and she still is in disbelief when Jesus actually appears to her and instructs her to go back to the disciples and, be, and greet them and tell them that he will see them in Galilee. And so it is that we begin with the 19th verse. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. That day, that, that day, the day when Mary found the empty tomb, that first Easter morning, she encountered the resurrected Jesus. And he instructed her to go back and tell his brothers and sisters, that he is alive and that he would meet them again. And not only was it a special day, but that day was the first day of the week. Previously, they ha the disciples had celebrated the Sabbath because on the last day of the week was to be observed as the Sabbath just as the law had been handed down to them. But now this was the first day of the week uh, that we know as Sunday. And the first day of the week, if you recall back in Genesis, was the day that God started to work and, on creation. And it... And now here God was doing a new thing. So on the first day of the week, God started a new creation. God started something that was to continue throughout the ages. That no longer would there just be the um, old sinful ways. But through Jesus Christ, people had been reconciled to God. The creation had been reconciled to God. And so there was a new creation that had been initiated. And there were those disciples in that upper room, locked away for fear of the Jews. Now what would they have to fear if they knew that the Lord had been resurrected, but, of course, they hadn't had proof except Mary's witness. And 
But the other thing was they were concerned. It was the temple authorities that had arrested Jesus and who had him crucified, who were the ones who could do the same thing for anyone who was following Jesus. And so they did not want to be found and arrested. They had to figure all this out. What were they to do? So as they're there hovering away, Jesus comes among them and says, Peace be with you. There was a locked door, but the locked door did not keep Jesus out. He came through that door. He didn't have to break it down. He didn't have to ram it down. He didn't have to have a key to unlock it. He, he was able to go past those barriers to reach his disciples. And then he says to them, peace be with you. These are the same people who had been following him and then who abandoned him, who denied him, who lived in fear for their lives. Only the women and one of the disciples was at that cross on the day that Jesus died. And so these were people who indeed Jesus could have condemned, but instead he comes not to judge, but to offer peace and a new way of living, to erase um, all the old, to erase all the sinfulness, to wash it clean so that we, they could start over again, to be able to do the work that they were being called to do. And so it was that he showed them it was really him. He wasn't a ghost. But look, these are the nail holes. Look, this is where I was pierced. It's really me, guys. Believe it. This is the good news. And when the disciples realized, wow, this is really him. This isn't a ghost. This isn't our imagination. They rejoiced and were glad. And they were given the eyes of faith to see where Christ still suffered. But nonetheless, they were given eyes of faith to see the, resurrect, the, the crucified and resurrected Jesus. And then Jesus goes on to, get, to say to them again, peace be with you. He wants to underscore that he that the one who came to judge is not judging him, but came that they might have life abundantly. And so he says to them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. This is the commission that his disciples are given here in John, that they go out to share the good news of God's love and the good news of the forgiveness of sins and to believe that through Jesus Christ, he was, they do indeed have new life. And then, in John, we have our own mini Pentecost because Jesus says this. He breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. They were not going to be sent out unarmed or ill-equipped, but indeed Jesus gave them the Spirit to go out in faith, to be able to face the people who were going to be the doubters, the ones who just might crucify them, who just might put them to death, who might throw them in prison. But he was, the spirit would be there to empower them to speak and also to give them the power to face whatever needed to be faced. And then Jesus says to them, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. 
And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Old Testament understanding, what the Jews had come to believe, was, and scripturally they, it was there, that if a person sinned, that sin would indeed affect several generations of the future. And so it was when Jesus healed a lame man, when he was brought to them, the, um, the people asked, was it the parents that sinned or was it this boy that sinned? And Jesus told them, the time will come when you will, when each of you will be responsible for your own sins. You will not be, they will not carry over. And sin in the Gospel of John is unbelief. The refusal to receive the revelation of God in the person of Jesus. That indeed it was in Jesus that God was revealed. And at the cross and in the resurrection, we see that indeed this was the one God had sent, that this was God, this was the Logos. He was the light, he was the truth and the way. And so God is made known through Jesus. And so these disciples were to be sent out and if they didn't go out to preach the good news, people would not hear the good news. And so how would they know that their sins are forgiven? So they would hold on to their sins. And it would be passed down from one generation to the next. But if, and so Jesus says, go out and preach the good word. Because if you don't, then sins will be retained. But by my blood and my sacrifice, you are washed clean. Share that good news, Jesus says. Share that good news. Thomas doubts the report of his friends. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord! But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my fingers in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe.
I want physical proof of this resurrected Jesus. I have my doubts. I have a hard time believing because people are supposed to stay dead. When you're dead, you're dead, and that's all there is to it. You disciples, what, are you going through a mass hallucination here or what? I want to see proof. I, I don't know. I, you know, it's bad enough when Mary came back, but now you guys? Come on. I don't believe it. I, 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 it just goes against everything that I've been taught and I've, been lear I've learned. Oh, yes. We, we don't know who Thomas's twin was, but this we do know, that uh, we all have our doubts at some point in our lives. Perhaps we have a crisis of faith. We are in those dark times and we really wonder, is there even a God, let alone the believe that the resurrection of the body truly happened? Oh, we profess it, but do we actually believe it? There are times when we have our doubts and our fears. And yet, Every time that we fear, every time that we get nervous about something, that, uh, oh, we can imagine that this will happen, and that will happen, and that will happen, and that will happen. So why am I even going to walk out the door? I think I'll stay here and watch TV tonight. We don't we get scared, and so we pull back, and we deny the fact that if God is calling us to do something, God equips us to do it. God strengthens us by the Spirit. God, Jesus sent us out into the world to be able to, to move forward. I, but I want physical proof, says Thomas. And he's probably not unlike many of us. We come to church, but sometimes we doubt Sometimes we just are not sure about this whole thing. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Again, these guys are in a locked room. It's a week later. They've already been told, go out and share the good news. But instead, they're still locked away. What, for fear of the Jews? What are they afraid of? They've been given the Holy Spirit. So they are still locked away. But at least this time, Thomas is with them. And again, Jesus comes among them and says to them, peace be with you. Christ's peace, and there is no condemnation. And then for Thomas, Christ appears to him in a very special way. He comes specifically to that room so that Thomas will know, so that Thomas will have the proof that he needs, that the crucified and resurrected Jesus is indeed alive. There will be no doubt once Thomas 
indeed comes in contact with the crucified and resurrected Jesus. answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. This confession of Thomas's is perhaps the highest what uh, theologians call Christological confessions that um, are in the Gospels. Because Thomas calls him not only Adonai, my Lord, but also Elohim, my God. And he, used, and he says, you are God. Up until this point, people have understood him as the Messiah, the one sent by God. But now Thomas says, you are God. There can be no question about it. And Jesus says, all right, I gave you the physical proof. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Thomas is not rebuked for his disbelief and then his belief. But it was indeed a blessing for all those who would come to believe. And so we ask ourselves, what fears feed our doubts? What keeps us locked? What proof do we need to truly accept? come to the understanding that Jesus was the Messiah, was the Christ, was raised from the dead. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, says John. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Believing in Jesus is the same as abiding in Jesus. Living in him and he in you. It is a relationship that exists between Jesus Christ and the believer. We are encouraged to find our life, to be new creations that God initiated through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Jesus keeps showing up in the world. And he shows up in the word that is read and preached and sung, in the water of, of baptism, and in the bread and the juice of the communion meal in one another as we share fellowship and care for one another. 
He does not want us to miss out on the life and the peace that he offers. We are encouraged to find our life within the life of the crucified and risen Christ, who sends us out as the Father also sent him into the world. And Jesus keeps sending us out of our safe, locked rooms into a world that desperately needs the gifts of life and peace that he offers, that Christ offers through God. And so it is easier to stay in the locked room or in the locked church, but we are to focus not on our security, but rather on the risky business of mission, of going into the world to which we are called. My friends, resurrection life is here and now, as well as is to come. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that helps us face even our darkest days and offers us new life that allows us to participate in God's new creation, which he continues to create. We are forgiven, and we are freed, and we are offered peace so that we might be witnesses to the crucified and resurrected Jesus. Believe this good news. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now and stand and affirm our faith in the words from the brief statement of faith that can be found printed in the bulletin. Please rise. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating without castes, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel, unjustly condemned for sin and sedition. Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of pain and 